there, welcome back to another Make Science Easy Chemistry lesson. In this lesson, we're going to be learning about separating mixtures. We're going to find out about some of the different experimental techniques we can use to separate mixtures from each other. So first of all, we need to know what a mixture is. And the first thing to point out is that mixtures and compounds are not the same. So compounds are substances that are chemically joined together and the atoms in a compound have a fixed ratio. So we can see here we have some water, H2O. Water is a compound. The hydrogen and oxygen atoms are chemically joined together. And the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is fixed. There are always two hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom, and you cannot change that. So water is a compound. Also, in a compound, it is not possible to separate the atoms from each other by physical means. You can only separate them by chemical means, by chemical reactions. We see here we have some salt. Again, salt is a compound, and table salt has the chemical name sodium chloride. And sodium and chlorine are chemically joined together. And the ratio of sodium atoms to chlorine atoms is fixed. It is one to one. For every one chlorine atom, there is one sodium atom, and this ratio is fixed. So again, it is not possible to separate sodium and chlorine from each other by physical means, only by chemical means. So water and salt are both very good examples of compounds. If we mix salt and water together, however, we make a mixture. So we have sodium chloride solution. And sodium chloride solution is a mixture of the compounds of water and the compound of sodium chloride. So it contains salt and water. It is an impure substance because there is more than one substance in here and it is a mixture. And the reason why we call it a mixture is because the salt and the water are not in a fixed ratio. What this means is we can add and remove salt and water from this mixture. So we can change the amount of salt and we can change the amount of water. We can change the ratios of salt to water by physical means. And we can separate the salt and we can separate the water from each other by physical means. So this is a mixture, not a compound. When we separate a mixture, we need to consider the physical properties of the substances in that mixture. And mixtures with different physical properties are all going to be separated in different ways. Just a quick table to show you some of the different ways we could separate things. If we have a mixture of solids, one of them contains a ferrous metal, so iron, something that's magnetic. We would use magnetism to separate them. If we have a mixture of solids with different densities, so one has a high density, one has a low density, we'd use sedimentation. We put them into water. The high density substances should sink first. The low density substances will take longer to sink, or they may not sink at all. If we have a suspension of a solid in a liquid, and what this means is that the solid has not dissolved in the liquid, we can filter it to separate them. The liquid will pass through the filter, the undissolved solid will not pass through it. If we have a solid that has dissolved in a solution, we can evaporate or crystallize the solid out of the solution. Or if we want to obtain the liquid, we can distill the liquid. If we have immiscible liquids, liquids that do not mix, we can use a separation funnel. If we have multiple miscible liquids, we can use distillation or fractional distillation. And if we have solids of different solubility that are dissolved in a solution, we can use chromatography, which we've seen before. So let's have a look at some examples of how we can actually separate mixtures of solids. So here we've got a mixture of two solid powders. We're going to say sand and iron, for example. As one of the solids is a ferrous metal, the iron, it can be separated using a magnet. So... Because the iron is magnetic, it is going to be attracted to the magnet. Sand is not magnetic, so it's not going to be attracted to the magnet at all. This means we separate the iron from the sand because of the physical property of magnetism. So the two substances can be separated with a magnet. 
This would also be true if we had iron and aluminium, for example. Iron would stick to the magnet, aluminium would not. So if we have one substance that's magnetic and one or more that are not, we can separate the magnetic substance using a magnet. If we have solids of different densities, we can separate them using water. So we place our mixture into some water. And what we find is the substances with lower density are likely to float. And substances with greater density than water are going to sink. So we have separated out our mixture based on their density. If we have immiscible liquids, and immiscible liquids are liquids that do not mix. Oil and water are really good examples of this. Water has a higher density than oil, so the oil floats and the water sinks. Oil always floats in water because it has a lower density than water. We can then open our separating funnel and allow only the water to pass through. Once all of the water is passed through, we can then place another beaker so we can place another beaker under our separating funnel and this time because there's no water anymore only oil will pass out so we're using a separating funnel to first of all empty off the water and then empty off the oil so our mixture has been separated another way you could do this if you have them both in a beaker and you don't have a separating funnel is you could use a pipette to remove the oil from on top of the water, but this doesn't work quite as well. We can separate miscible liquids by using distillation, and miscible liquids are liquids that do mix together. Good examples of miscible liquids are alcohol and water. Now, water and alcohol have different boiling points, so we separate them with distillation. Now, Water has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius, and ethanol, which is everyday alcohol, has a boiling point of 78 degrees Celsius. So, we make sure that the temperature of the mixture is above 78 degrees Celsius, but below 100 degrees Celsius. This means only the alcohol will boil, the water will not boil. Some of it will still evaporate, but most of the water will remain as a liquid. The alcohol will turn into a gas. As it turns into a gas, it rises up, and it passes through something called a Liebig condenser. The Liebig condenser is surrounded by water, although this water does not touch the alcohol, but it cools the alcohol down enough to turn it back into a liquid. So, only the alcohol evaporates and boils, and then gets turned back into a liquid, so the liquid we collect at the end of this experiment will be pure alcohol. We can also separate rock salt. Now rock salt is a natural mixture of salt, sodium chloride and rocks. And we can separate it to remove the salt from the mixture so we can obtain pure salt. So in order to separate the rock salt to obtain pure salt, the first thing we need to do is we need to dissolve the mixture into the water. Now the salt is soluble. This means that it will dissolve in water. Sodium chloride is soluble, but the rock is not soluble. It's gonna to sink to the bottom. So we are going to end up with a salt solution and undissolved rock as a mixture. Because we now have a solution of sodium chloride and we have undissolved rocks, we can separate our solution from the rocks by filtration. So we take a conical flask and we place a filter funnel over it. We then place some filter paper into the filter funnel. And we pour our mixture of salt solution and undissolved rock into our filter funnel. The solution of salt will pass through the filter funnel, but the undissolved rock will not. So we end up with a filtrate of salt solution in our conical flask and we end up with a residue of undissolved rock on the filter paper. So we now end up with a mixture of salt and water. So we now need to separate our salt from our water. And in order to do this, we pour the salt solution into an evaporating basin. You can just leave this solution on the side and let it evaporate naturally, but this is a much faster method. We then heat it gently with a Bunsen burner. 
The water will evaporate, but the salt will not evaporate. As the water evaporates, pure salt particles begin to crystallize. And once crystallization starts, you turn off the heat. When all of the water has evaporated, you are left with pure salt at the bottom of your evaporating basin. So, when pure salt remains, you have separated the salt from the rock salt. So, in summary, a mixture is impure. There are two or more substances in a mixture. They are not in a fixed ratio and they are not chemically joined. They can be separated by physical methods. Compounds are not mixtures. They contain two or more substances that are chemically joined. They're in a fixed ratio and they cannot be separated physically. The physical properties of a substance in a mixture affect how we're going to separate them from each other. Ferrous metals can be separated with a magnet. High density substances will sink. Low density substances will float. Immiscible liquids do not mix. Less dense liquids float and you can separate them with a separating funnel. Admissible liquids do mix, they'll have different boiling points so they can be separated by distillation. Insoluble solids will not dissolve, they can be separated by filtration. So, I hope you now know what a compound is, and what a mixture is, and what the differences are. I hope you now know some of the different ways that we can separate mixtures from each other. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you found it useful. If you have, please like and subscribe. It means a lot to us and it helps us to grow. If you want even more great science lessons, then please check out our website. We have loads more there. You can find the address in the description below. So, until next lesson, keep on learning.